Alrighty guys, hello and welcome back to the show. So we have another installment in our continuing saga on the tournament that I've hosted, which is a 2v2 tournament. This is the loser bracket finals, or not necessarily the loser bracket, but the lower bracket finals, uh, or the lower bracket semifinals, I believe. Um, this is going down between Team uh, Beaver Sparing Baguettes versus Team... I'm blanking on, uh, or Team Damn Dukes, that's right. So let me introduce the players real quick. On the northern side of the map, we have Conorak, who's going Aeon opening first land in the northern corner. And in the western corner, we have Regal Eagle. He's going Seraphim, also opening first land. I am joined by Scoob, who has been a longtime supporter of the channel and actually one of the players in this game. So this is going to be a little bit more of an interview style format where I want to get into the minds of Scoob and In Control and see uh, what kind of decisions they're actually making. So Scoob, I'll give you a chance to introduce yourself and you can introduce the Southern team. Hello guys, uh, we are team Dam Dukes. Uh, I'm in the East corner and in the Southern East corner is In Control, uh, my teammate. Um, from uh, that in that map Bermuda Equator, we watched some uh, replay of fire rated player in 2v2, and uh, it was clearly obvious that the main point of the map is to uh, get those four mixes uh, in the, the the bridge on both sides, and that's why we made a build order when we rush uh, as quickly as we can uh, transport. Okay. Uh, I also. Uh, a YouTube channel where I made a guide and uh, I uh, sometimes stream or, or made some replay. Yeah, so Scoob's a, a YouTuber as well. He does a lot of guides as well as uh, streams and replays on Forge Alliance Forever as well. Um, he's one of the, if y'all remember, if y'all have been a longtime supporter of the channel, like talking, I guess, two years now, Man, I've been doing this a long time. Um, two years now, there was a replay review I did of one of Scoob's games whenever Scoob was like a 200 level player. And uh, now, Scoob, I'm pretty sure you could kick my ass if uh, if you wanted to in games. Maybe, but uh, right now you you did <laughs> you did it more than I did. <laughs> and uh, we see we we spot we start with two uh, with two interceptor, uh, me and my teammate, because we want to airlock the other team, if they want to, to make the same strategy as ours with a transport rush. And that's why we we were both uh, in sync with the, the Interceptor. And I got lucky and caught uh, the raid and uh, the mobber on my side. Okay, so you had in control then were uh, on comms and had kind of a game plan then as you guys were going into this, right? Yeah, and we even practice where we just play uh, on uh, one side of the map. And uh, it's funny because uh, before that training, I had the rating of end control and end control had my rating. But uh, because he's a better uh, 1v1 player than me, he stole my rating. <laughs> As tends to happen. Uh, but I can see both of y'all getting transports out really, really quickly and dropping a lot of a uh, lot of land factories down so both of y'all are going cybern in this game um was that part of the plan or are both of y'all just really comfortable playing cybern uh in control i uh, like to play cybern and i like to have the same uh, faction as my ally because if my ally dies controlling only one faction is easier for me than multiple one even though you can have the advantage of the other faction I prefer uh, easier control than uh, the cup of uh, managing multiple factory line. Okay. Is that uh, something that y'all worked out between yourselves recently? Because I think y'all played different factions in the previous games that I've uh, cast from you. Um, in this tournament, uh, maybe I play a bit of surfing because I'm a little bit better with it. But... Um, I think it's just just a feeling. If we are confident, I play uh, the Seraphim. Because usually I'm the one that gets killed and not the other way around. <laughs> okay, that's definitely fair. 
So another question for you. I see your comm walking out into the water at this point, kind of next to the four, uh, the four mechs expansion here at about five minutes into the game. Um, what, what, what was the plan there um, as far as thought process? It was uh, uh, walking next to the factory, but the, the pathfinding found it was easier to go across the lake. And then when I uh, saw the comm was there, um, I tried to go for the Navy and try to reclaim the Navy factory. Oh, okay, I, so... I suppose there was Navy factory in his base, but the, the basic plan was to go there and make the gun upgrade uh in uh, next to the factory oh gotcha so you were you were intending to go towards this formex expansion with the land factories and pathfinding screwed you over a little yeah. bit and you ended up in <laughs> you ended up out to sea so to speak yeah <laughs> uh, well that that tends to happen and i'm seeing you're getting some good raids now on uh this would be conorax expansion so, yeah, it wasn't supposed to work because normally there is like PD or his army or even the commander. So, but the, the scouting party managed to, to grab four mixes. I was pretty happy about it. Okay, gotcha. So then, yeah, looking at this, we're seeing some of Connor XT1 units. His, his commander is also now having to, having to deal with your T1. He also has a lot of bombers. And I know that y'all went for an early, y'all went for a little bit of an early air crush, but it seems like uh, end control seems to be the only one with interceptors right now. Is that uh, was that on purpose or part of the plan? Or I am posturing right now. Okay. So uh, <laughs> I pause my factory and I uh, focus a bit more on the energy production. Okay, gotcha. And so then talking about kind of build order because um, you know, I've noticed that there are a couple of uncapped mechs where you just kind of all in on this game, like we need to get these four mechs expansions and then screw the rest of the map. Yeah, that's the plan. We had to invest a lot in uh, that forward expansion because we can, we can still expand and they can, because I still have some mechs to, to grab, but uh, once the the game is uh, on both sides, we are four mixes, eight mixes with the team, more than them. Gotcha. That's uh, two, that's two or more T two mixes before the T two phase. Yeah, that's definitely good. And looking at honestly though, looking at like the eco graph right now, y'all are lagging a little bit behind in total mass accrued. Um, damn Duke said. That's mostly the uh, reclaim. It's mostly the reclaim. Okay, so Conorak and uh, Regal Eagle just focusing a little bit more on that reclaim. They're also focusing a lot on naval production, and I'm only just now seeing y'all get into uh, the Navy. Was that a concern for you at this point? Uh, I'm not concerned about the, the frigate because on that map, the frigate can really shoot any Mexis. It's the T2 Navy that's really uh, crucial. And now I have the problem where um, I have a commander in the sea and nothing to uh, defend myself. Yeah. So I retreat my commander near to uh, my uh, engineer and I made some uh, torpedo defense. Oh, this is a really <laughs> good, yeah, this is a really good um, distance build right here. I actually didn't see this whenever I was reviewing the replays earlier, but yeah, getting uh, some torpedo launchers with assistance to your commander on a distance build. That's a uh, that's really good heads up thinking. I definitely would not have thought of that. I would have just panicked and kind of spun I around in circles. I would die if I didn't uh, saw that. Probably. If I didn't think about it. Yeah, probably. And of course, uh, like you say, we are far behind in into the navy. We are ahead in the lance uh, fight and maybe uh, in uh, the echo side. Yeah. We, yeah. Look at the echo now. Now that all the mechs are capped. Yeah, much That's closer. That's the main difference. Much closer on that side. So um, as far as, I know that you talked about early strategy here where your early strategy or early game plan was we need to grab these 4MX expansions. What was y'all's long-term 
strategy in this game? Uh, overwhelm them with uh, T2 Navy and uh, just uh, just play on the defensive on the bridge. Okay, so play play defensive on the bridge and then sacrifice the Navy a little bit more early on, but since y'all have these Formex expansions, gonna play the long game a little bit more, you're gonna get more mass and then be able to take control of the middle Navy? Yeah, that's the plan. Okay. What about the outside Navy? Uh, was that something that y'all were concerned about? Um, it's, it's coming play way much later. It's like when you are T2 Navy and you can spend a little bit of mass on a T2 Navy on the side and make like a cruiser if you are not Cybron and Destroyer if you are Cybron. Okay, so y'all were planning on crushing then a little bit before that was actually going to come yeah. into play. It's, it's extremely rare when the opportunity presents itself where that's the play. Okay, gotcha. I've been owned by that play in the past, so I had to ask the question, you know, as uh, on Bermuda's Locket, I've locked down this middle section before and then been absolutely destroyed by cruisers coming out around the outside, as uh, Eminem would say, round the outside, round the outside. Don't worry about the copyright. I'm sure it'll be fine. So, uh, were you and in control on call or on comms or on Discord at this point? Uh, yeah, we were on, on Discord, and uh, I didn't know that uh, Regal Legal play really well and uh, push back uh, uh, in control because usually in control is better than me in a one v one situation. And right now there was not really uh, a team play. A bit on the Navy side, but it was really light. So right now it's still mostly a 1v1 fight. And uh, look look at my drop <laughs> on the, the island, Ooh, on the bridge, really nice. on the other bridge. Yeah, I was pretty proud of it. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell. Uh, you got some Medusa down, and uh, we got some engineers, I think, trying to upgrade a mix or something. Uh, goes to Conorak, sure. Conor Eco is hurting right now at almost negative 100 mass. And uh, I'll have Conor on for the next game to uh, walk us through their thought process, him and Regal Eagle, for uh, the next game. But uh, yeah, these Medusa, they look like they're <laughs> poised to do a lot of damage here. Yeah, and uh, spreading your uh, small RT like that can be really helpful. It's a pain in the ass to clear them, and uh, they do a lot. Yeah, that's actually a really good point. So you got uh, a one light artillery that's uh, shelling a land factor. You got two going into his base and then another one dealing with an expansion right here. So, yeah, that's actually... Uh... And, and you see the, the frigate does, can fight the land. Frigate can only fight the navy on that map and uh, the beach. That's true. That's a good, uh, that's a good call out. These cliffs um, are usually like 9.9 .9 times out of 10 are a little bit too tall for frigates to actually deal with. I think they can hit a little bit of the Formex expansion if they have the right range, but you're correct. Normally, uh, unless it's at the beach, there's not really a whole lot that frigates can do there. And now we have, we have catch up uh, in the Echo total, on, in total mass. And uh, because we are more max points, uh, at, for me, the game is in the bag, but Regal Eagle is really putting a fight and uh, I didn't expect that. I was expecting to be me to be uh, in the in control position. Right. So you were expecting to get rolled over by Conorak, and then Regal Eagle would get rolled over by in control. Yeah. Well, but have... I think because of my raid, uh, I was in a nice position. And you see, uh, I, I know that I have enough T1 uh, on the side, so I pulled my factory to. Uh, spare a bit of mass yeah it's definitely good i was actually going to ask you you've got like a pretty big t1 army here if there was if you were going to try and just brute force your way into uh connor x base it's a gamble that it doesn't need to to take i can just uh, stay there chilling and uh pouring all of my resources in my economy and in the navy 
So that's a good thing to talk about is uh, if you've gotten as much map control as you want, which in this case, I think you have and have all the mexes that you want and have a mex advantage over your opponent, you don't necessarily need to force the issue immediately, right? Uh, yeah, look at the drop on the top. Uh, I, I saw a, a glimpse of a drop and uh, I respond uh, accordingly because that is the kind of thing that can that can screw you over yeah i mean that's that was only t1 so uh i think if you can kill uh five or t1 mixes i would still be fine and uh one tank survived the crash don't know how ah well it happens to the best of us <laughs> and then i'm looking at uh you and in control Really in lockstep, like y'all have played, y'all have played very well as a team together this tournament. Um, so hats off to you, just kind of personally. But yeah. I'm watching you guys uh, push into Regal Eagles uh, naval production here at about 15 and a half minutes. So I mean, it's looking like y'all's game plan was very well thought out at this point in the game. As far as uh, you're about to take out Regal Eagles T2 HQ. You got a destroyer that's shelling uh, some of the Another one incoming. <laughs> yeah, previously safe positions, and yeah, you got another destroyer that's bumping around out in the field as well. That's just uh, looking at some uh, highest rated player replay on the the map. Anyone can do that. So, who did you guys watch specifically? Or uh, I'm just curious. Um, uh it's not a specific, we just look at high-rated player playing on a ranked game on a specific map with the same number of players. And with one or two replay, uh, you can figure out what's what the kind of uh, of play they made. What is the plan, what works, what doesn't work. Gotcha. And, and... Not, not, not that we have the, the Navy secure, uh, we just feared the the T3 air, and that's the only that's the only way out, I think. There there is Chrono, but even with Chrono, I have enough to uh, store him for for a good while. So a T3 air was that something you guys had scouted or because? No, it's just something that we know we are bad against. And uh, we, we, we just need to, to keep in mind that a two error is possible and that can win, win us the day. Okay, so on the T3 air side, you know, it wasn't something that y'all had scouted. Um, is that something there you in, in control felt like you were weak against as players or just weak against in your yeah. strategy? Uh, that's something we, we talk about and we know that we are kind of weak on uh, the air air side of the game so uh, I, I know that uh, that I need to uh, because I'm usually the one that is greedy and have the better economy I know that that it's me generally that uh, go for the t air that can afford it at least yeah well I know from playing with you that you usually out eco me quite a bit and you usually like to play a very greedy build so that's, yeah. uh, I, I, I like having more than, than my opponent. Yeah, that's thing by the weight. <laughs> I think that's a, that's a lot of people. They like to have uh, they like to have more mass. They like to have more, like to have more mass. Like to have more e, more units. You know, it's just more of everything is better. Yeah. As we will say, more shit control less shit. <laughs> <laughs> more shit controls less shit. That's. That's a that's a very good way to say it. Shout out to Willow, by the way. I don't know if he'll watch this video, but uh, yeah, if you guys haven't if you guys haven't by any strange stretch of the imagination heard of Willow's duality, uh, check out his channel. I'll link it down below. He's another uh, FAP caster. He and I have done several co casts together. Uh, also, super nice guy. Very motivating to me. Keeps me uh, keeps me in line, so to speak. And uh, another thing to know is uh, the. The cruiser of the Cybern have a, a nice uh, uh, land uh, land fire. It's not as good as a destroyer, but it's still quite good. It still can fight on its own. 
Yeah, the I cruiser. Think Sorry, go ahead. I think I spoke over you. Oh, how much uh, it can provide uh, to a navy? Yeah, that's definitely true. Like I'm seeing um, a cruiser in this more southern naval flotilla, I guess, uh, providing a, a lot of value as well as one up north and actually pushing Conorak into the red below 2400 HP. And that might have, uh, is that, so I'm seeing that in control lost his Form X expansion on the bridge. Is that kind of what saved yours? Uh, the, what do you mean? The, well, the, the tree, uh, the tree boat? Yeah, so I see the three boats up in the north. Conor, yeah, I that, believe, that's has. What, that, that's what pushed back uh, the Conor come. And I think uh, I. Oh no, I also had some T2PD, but uh, they got killed, I think. Yeah. I'm not seeing any T2. Uh, no, they're there. You got one. Yeah, but there was more, but uh, <laughs> it was further ahead and uh, they, they killed him when he pushed. Gotcha. And with that, uh, kind of both base controlled and uh, you as well as in control and really you as far as the Tech 2 Navy uh, getting ready to, well, there were a couple of destroyers and cruisers out from in control, but I think in control focused a little bit more on air than you did. That's going to be Conorak as well as Regal Eagle bowing out of this game. Um, so Scoob, last minute thoughts on the game. Hit me. Just just be prepared uh it's just it just we just uh came more prepared than our opponent on that map and that's why we won because i think uh, as a team they were better than us but uh if you are prepared you are you have a huge edge against your opponent yeah and you can definitely see i think that preparedness definitely paid off as far as y'all running a couple of drills as well as watching uh, the replays dropping these form X expansions in the middle, even though in control did lose his in the long run. I think those paid dividends for you. So um, with that, is there any, are there any closing remarks Scoob, that you'd like to make? Yeah. Uh, thanks for the tourney. I improve a lot uh, by having a setting where uh, there is competition and not just uh, eating the ladder constantly. We can all, we can all improve with, competition especially in tournaments i haven't played in a tournament in a while and i probably need to so with that guys uh we'll see you all in game two and conorak should be joining me on game number two so i will check back with y'all in a bit all righty everybody hello and welcome back to the show so we have part two of our uh match between uh beavers bearing baguettes and the damn dukes it's been several days actually since i coordinated the very first since i did the first match with scoob so that's why i did another intro because i was forgetting but either way uh for this game instead of scoob i'm joined by the illustrious the one and only conorak am i pronouncing your name correctly by the way uh yeah it's good enough like i grew up in the netherlands so that ch sounds more like a ch, so i always was called conorach back in the day but oh gotcha Kona, Kona rag works fine in english so that's that will do i'll try and i'll try and do the conor <laughs> <laughs> and my american tongue can't do that uh, but yes let's get into introducing our players real quick we've got conor <laughs> can't do that uh playing yeah. seraphim on the far western side of the map he's going first land his ally at the bottom side of the map is going to be regal eagle and i'll flip it to conorak conor yeah. to yeah. introduce Conorak's the other right. yeah the other side. All right. So on the top, we got Scoop, who has been the kind of the black horse of this tournament, in my opinion, so far. And then on the right side, there is N Control. Yeah, both of them uh, doing pretty good. I think uh, Sc uh, Scoop and N Controls, they, they have been doing really good. And uh, wasn't it that, that Scoop picked N Controls and then N Controls is now a higher rating than, than him? Something like that? I believe that you're right. I believe that did happen. So funny, how, funny our world, isn't it? But, yeah, it's quite quite impressive. But uh, going back to kind of the original format for this tournament um, or for this particular game, you know, I've got kind of questions to ask you as far as you know different strategies, etc. But um, first off, did you and Regal Eagle 
have a little bit of a round table before you guys went into this match or um and put together any sort of strategy or were you guys winging it because i would definitely be winging it <laughs> yeah so early on in the tournament we were super engaged and we were like looking for all kinds of ways we practiced together multiple days and like we, we, we devised a couple of strategies and and you gotta understand that Rigo Ego, he's he's an extremely enthusiastic player. He's from France. He he brings a lot of energy to the match and he's loud on the voice and he's always telling me what well, all the things that's going on is super cool to play with him. Uh but there was a really big gap, uh, I believe, between the uh the the top bracket where we lost our first match and then uh, this elimination bracket uh, game we we didn't play together for a while. We we didn't have any any practice. We didn't look at the map. We didn't come up with build orders. We didn't look at end controls and scoops games. So we had very very little idea of what to expect when we went in, uh, which I believe is is part of the reason we we performed so badly both in the Bermuda Locket game and this one. Uh, of course, scoop and end controls uh, I, I feel have have done really good. So. Uh, props to them for for crushing us in both matches but uh, yeah so like you said we were winning this uh we came in with with little to no plan um and uh yeah you can you can already see that, that that's kind of uh showing here uh on my side i have only uh, two land factories up or the third is coming up but uh uh, Scoop is already sending a whole bunch of tanks to my side. He's gonna be disrupting my production on the on the left side. And uh, in the bottom, Rigo has his air up a little late. He's getting bombed. I think that bomber has now three or four kills or something. He's just murdering uh, engineers. Um, and so yeah, um, we're talking about going to the center, taking control of this quantum gateway that that you see there, right? It's a couple thousand mass. And uh, and and Rigo went for it. Uh, he's already in there. Uh, I scouted uh, Scoop still in their base, so I, I knew I knew he had maybe uh, maybe end controls coming for him, but but he should have been been fine there. Uh, while I am getting absolutely crushed uh, by like a dozen tanks in the top, I have very little army. I really fucked up the build order, uh, and so I am going to make a choice that that gets. Uh, that gets Rigo killed in the end, but uh, you'll see that in a minute. Spoilers, but uh, so as far as like your your overall choice, you know, based on the reclaim on this map, you got your fourth land factory coming up. You did have a really really good bomber earlier. You were talking about um, in controls bomber that was uh, causing problems for Regal Eagle. I did see a bomber for you though that I think also got three or four kills. So. Um, is the main problem right now that you're just floating a whole lot of mass off of Reclaim and can't really do anything with it? Or is it armies in the wrong spot at the wrong time? What does that look like? Yeah, I, I don't have any any Reclaim. I, I probably like didn't dedicate enough engineers to Reclaim in the right areas. Uh, and so I'm, I'm actually stalling mass pretty heavily, even though I only have four land factories up. Um, and, and the problem is that there's just so much more army from Scoop. Uh, if you compare the, the army values, he's just way, way ahead of me. And for for those of y'all that might not know, because this map, we don't cast this map all that often because it doesn't, I usually try and cast bigger team games and this map doesn't necessarily lend itself to big team games, but this is a pretty reclaim heavy map with a lot of reclaim around these little valleys and ridges so there there is a good amount of reclaim to uh to take as i think regal eagle trying to go for that quantum gateway but now it's getting double teamed there in the middle so yeah I'm guessing this is the mistake you were talking about exactly so we said like all right let's both go to mid then at first i scouted early i saw both acu still in their base and then when that army came to my top, I had no real other choice than to send my ACU north and defend that. As you see, that that is kind of a protection for my expansion there. But uh, yeah, in the meantime, we didn't scout well. And then both and controls and scoop come to the middle. Regal collected quite a lot of mass from everything but the actual quantum gateway. But then they both walked into him and there was no way he was going to get out of that. And from that point, 
you know, if at six, seven minutes in, you, you lose one of your teammates in a, in a game like this, there's very little you can really do to recover. Um, again, still, I think that uh, Scoop probably has more army value than than both the armies uh, together. And uh, yeah. unfortunately, that's uh, a quick, quick end to a game that, that could have been a lot uh, better. If you look at rating wise, uh, should have been uh, really close. Uh, yeah, I guess mistakes were made, <laughs> as we used to say. So as far as, um, as far as whenever you inherited Regal Eagle's base, what was, you know, was it, I guess, panic or uh, what was kind of the plan as far as, you know, if you were going to try and pull this game out, uh, what did you do and what do you think you could have done differently? I, I think that, I think that, that the real reason that we failed this was that we both had a pretty poor build order compared to our opponents. And that shows in how much army they just have on the map in like the first five minutes, six minutes. So they put a lot of pressure on us. Uh, we don't have any choice but to defend. Uh, Rigo gets overrun by two ACUs, at which point I'm just trying to get more army out to, to stop what they have. Uh, yeah, I, I wish I could build a tech two at this point or tech two air, and but but there you have almost nothing. And I'm just putting more land factories down, try to get some more engineers to reclaim. Uh, but but we get overrun in the south. Uh, you can see we have like one tech two max. Uh, yeah, and controls two. has three. Yeah, we we have one in each of our base. Yeah. And and controls by himself where he has s3 uh, that's a pretty bad sign yep and also getting control of the quantum gateway so which yeah i'm curious so you don't actually get any reclaim until you kill the quantum gateway which i think a lot of people yes. might not understand on this map because it is a little bit of a meta on this map to rush the quantum gateway but you do need to kill it before it has 10,000 hit any. points, which yeah. is a lot. And then it gives you two and a half thousand uh, mass or something. Yeah, so you see Scoob just now actually getting reclaim um, off of that quantum gateway. So there is a, a considerable time investment on actually going for that quantum gateway. Definitely need to bring some light artillery with you. Then down at the bottom, seeing in control kind of run over what was formerly Regal Eagle's base. Um, as far as faction choices, I noticed both of you guys picked Seraphim. Uh, was that on purpose, or did you all just do you do you guys just like Seraphim? I'm a random player, and uh, Regal Eagle is a Seraphim player. He really enjoys it, and I think he plays uh, quite well with it. He understands the advantages, disadvantages of the different factions quite well. I think he's uh, he's really good at at understanding the meta. Um, he's he's really good at uh, at seeing what is happening in the game, especially in the commander, the one-up commander fight, which which was very visible in the earlier games uh, that we played. I think you cast the games we played against Slow, uh, yeah. and and he played extremely well, uh, keeping Slow off uh, uh, in both both games and and pushing him really hard by going for that early gun com, and then uh, really using that to his advantage. Uh, yeah, I, I have a bit more experience, but but my my gameplay overall is, is not the best, uh, unfortunately. Uh, scouting always an issue, right? Knowing where your opponent's ACUs are, knowing what kind of tech they're building. Uh, but I feel that that really in this map, the lack of preparation and then so the lack of of a good build order uh, really really hurt us. And and from like minute three four. They were just all over us, uh, pushing army into our face, and we we didn't have uh, enough to push back. Uh, maybe the the game plan should have been like just sacrifice the middle and have uh, both of us go on the outside. Might have been a different game. Uh, I don't know. It's tough to tell. I'd love to play a rematch against those guys uh, at some point, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see how they do in the rest of the tournament. Yeah. So something that you said earlier, um, where Regal Eagle is a Seraphim player and understands the strengths and weaknesses of the faction relatively well, 
some of the things that I try and do in my science videos are highlighting strengths and weaknesses of each faction. If you had to kind of put in a nutshell, just because not every not every person that watches my videos understands the ins and outs of the factions, uh, what would you kind of highlight as the strengths of Seraphim versus Cybran, which is what you guys are kind of up against right now? Hmm. It's a it's a tough one. I don't think Seraphim have a very strong tech one advantage against Cybran. Uh, the the obvious benefit of Siren being that the tanks move pretty fast in the early uh, the, the tech one tanks are faster than their counterparts. Um, the Seraphim generally the floating artillery can be abused in so many ways. Uh, artillery is really good, uh, but there's no no big advantage on, on this map. Uh, I think for Seraphim definitely not in, in the tech one stage. Uh, but the Ilshevos are are pretty damn good against the Tech One Cybern. Uh, they can really stand their ground, uh, and they will do really well against Tech Two Cybern uh, as well, I believe. Um, other than that, uh, there's no navy here, so it's not really a factor. Air is is pretty equal. I think the snipe capability of the Tech Two uh, Air on Cybern is a bit stronger, the Corsairs. Uh, but other than that. I don't really see see a difference until uh, late game. So on on this map, as if you're matching up Seraphim versus Cybran, it's hold off and hold the line as much as you can on T1, and then bum rush T2 for all you're worth, and then crush the map. <laughs> yeah, I'd say that 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 if the game had gone differently, uh, I I should definitely have had that tech two uh, tech two spam up. And, and stop the tech one like as soon as possible as soon as you can reasonably afford running a, a, a full tech two land factory or two uh with two support factories or something then then you you want to move to that at like uh seven minutes six seven minutes or something if you can do that and, and get a couple of wheels of us in the mix early that's really powerful right on well let's close it out here real quick uh first and foremost dude i think you're way too hard on yourself you're a great player <laughs> so uh you've uh kind of really uh gotten down on yourself here but you're a great player you're better than me um i mean i'm not a great player so i guess that's not really saying much but i think that you're a great player um so you and uh regal eagle do have definitely if you guys want to team up in a tournament in the future or uh if you play any of my tournaments in the future that'd be great um as far as sidebar notes i wanted to thank you as well as I did this for Scoob as well, but I wanted to thank you all for bearing with the scheduling difficulties. In hindsight, I was looking at this tournament through rose-colored glasses and uh, mm -hmm. scheduling difficulties on this tournament were a challenge. So I wanna thank you as well as uh, Regal Eagle for uh, bearing with some of the challenges in the first tournament that I've ever run. I've definitely taken notes on that. Um, and if you guys, uh, it's always a pleasure casting with you as well. Um, if you guys haven't checked out the co-cast that Conorak and I did, or Conorak and I did um, on my channel, uh, I'll link that down in the description below. And Conorak, I'll leave it to you to sign us out. Yeah, so uh, thanks again for organizing the tournament. I know that the uh, scheduling is sometimes tough, but I'm glad we got through it. Uh, I want to hear use this opportunity to uh, pitch, uh, pitch the, uh, the Rainbow Cup. It's uh, the next uh, upcoming tournament, I think, hosted by uh, Fergal. It has uh, quite some money in there, but of course we play more for fun than, than anything else. So it's a tournament where you, you play in a team of three versus an uh, other team of three, but there are like two neutral AIs in the game as well. So there's a kind of a bit of RNG in there. It's fun. Uh, he kept the rating for under 1800, I believe. So it makes it available to a bit wider range of players. I think uh, that tournament is going to be pretty crazy in, in many ways. <laughs> uh, so yeah, if, if you are a player in that, like say 1200 to 1800 rating and you want to try a tournament, uh, sign up for, for that one. It's on the forum. Uh, it's going to be great. And uh, yeah, thanks a lot uh, again for, for hosting us. And uh, yeah, to everybody else, thanks for watching and goodbye.